we associate execution by axe with the Tudor period. During the reign of King Henry VIII, hundreds of people were taken in London to the public beheading spot on Tower Hill. This was just outside the Tower of London's walls, and huge crowds would gather to witness public beheadings. Some of history's most famous figures, such as Thomas Cromwell, Sir Thomas More, and even two of Henry VIII's wives, Anne Boleyn and Catherine Howard, were beheaded. What we don't associate with Nazi Germany is the use of beheadings using the axe. At the start of Hitler's time in charge of the country, there was still one man who was utilising the medieval method of execution. During Hitler's time as dictator of Germany, there was a shift from using the axe to more reliable methods like the guillotine, to take the heads of those deemed by the state to be traitors. Many more executions were carried out using hangings and shootings, but there was one executioner who relied on his axe to take the heads off criminals. Today we look at Hitler's bloody executioner and axeman, Karl Groppler. Remember to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Franz Friedrich Karl Groppler was born on the 22nd of February 1868 in Magdeburg. His father was a railway worker, and at a young age he was a talented musician. He would often play and use this as a career, but then he worked as a postal worker. He later transitioned into a very different line of work. He began to become an apprentice, learning how to become a horse butcher, and then later ran a steam laundrette in his hometown. But the laundry business did not bring in enough money, so Groppler sought to earn more money in different ways. He found himself in the position as the main assistant to the Prussian executioner, Lorenz Schweitz. He worked in assisting executions in Prussia, performing duties such as confirming identities and performing checks before executions were carried out. A fellow Prussian executioner was sacked in 1906 after he submitted poor execution reports, and Groppler then took over his job. He became known for being one of the last executioners in Germany who was adept and confident in performing beheadings and executions using an axe. At the time in Germany, the guillotine was mostly used, but some people were sentenced to death by axe. He often carried these out with a hand axe, also known as a judging axe. Alongside using this bloody instrument, he also used a guillotine too, a much more reliable and quicker method of execution. There was much more that could go wrong using the axe, hence why the guillotine was preferred. In April 1924, Groppler became the sole executioner and the most senior in northern Germany, and he received a decent amount of money for this. He continued to take heads from serial killers and murderers, for example in February 1926 he executed Josef Jakubowski with his hand axe, but at the time there was a shift in politics. The Weimar Republic began to discuss the idea of abolishing the death penalty, and the number of executions across the country had gone down and decreased. For Groppler this was bad, as he was suffering from a lack of work and also a lack of money. He would receive around 60 marks per execution, and he was missing a lot of this. But as politics shifted, Groppler would be one of many inside Germany who would benefit financially from Hitler's rise to power. When the Nazis came into power and Hitler became Chancellor and Führer, the number of executions that were performed went up significantly. Anyone who was dissenting of Hitler in the Nazi party would simply be interrogated by the Gestapo, probably tortured, and then they were executed. Executions took the forms of many different methods, from guillotine to firing squad. Hitler was also not scared to order many deaths, and it's noted that for some of the executions, he even watched them being performed. Groppler was given a renewal of his annual contract, and was given a salary of 1,500 right marks a year, and was also given a rate of 50 marks per execution performed under Hitler's leadership. It was claimed that during the executions, Groppler would perform a Hitler salute during the executions and proceedings, and after it took place, he was warned of his conduct because of this, and was told to carry out his duties with dignity and professionalism. He was also an experienced executioner, and carried out executions for decades across many different cities. As his laundry business failed, he became more reliant on the deaths to pay his bills. He had taken the heads of some of Germany's most famous criminals, including the serial killer Peter Curtin, who was executed by guillotine in 1931. Curtin was described as a vampire of Dusseldorf, 
due to his perverse attempts to drink the blood of his victims. He continued to use the axe, executing Albert Kluger with his axe, but two of the last executions using beheading by axe in Germany were that of Baroness Benita van Falkenhayn and her accomplice Renata van Natsma. Falkenhayn had for a long time been monitored by the Abwehr, and she was obtaining and passing secret information about preparations for the German invasion of Poland, which would come years later, in 1939. She was sleeping with a Polish spy, as was Natsma, and they were both arrested and brought in front of the People's Court. Accused of espionage and treason, the People's Court, which always favoured the Nazi prosecution, sentenced both of them to death. Appeals for clemency were turned down, and they became two of the last people to be beheaded in Germany by axe. Inside the courtyard of Plotensee prison, the two women were led out, where Groppler stood with his axe ready. He took both of the heads of the women, however the executions caused outrage across the world. The foreign press heard of the bloody and barbaric executions, and with this, they criticised the Nazi leadership and the Nazi state, seeing it as a place where medieval execution methods were accepted. Because of the bloody backlash to Groppler's executions using the axe, Nazi Justice Minister Franz Gertner in October 1936 managed to convince Hitler that the best way of executing treasonous individuals and performing beheadings was using the guillotine. Groppler argued otherwise, saying he was quicker and it was more secretive to take the head of a condemned person using his trusty weapon. But this ended the reliance of Groppler's aim, his arm and swing of his axe. He was forced into retirement in 1937 and was credited with over 144 executions, but during the Second World War, his past would come back to haunt him. Towards the end of the conflict in 1945, he was arrested in his home by the Soviet Red Army. They arrested him in Magdeburg, and he had been responsible for executing four communists in 1934 in Hamburg prison. The papers and records had been discovered, and they believed he should pay for his role as an executioner, however whilst on remand following his arrest, in 1946 he died. So for a short time whilst Adolf Hitler was a dictator of Germany, Karl Groppler was serving as the Axeman in almost a medieval fashion. He relied on his axe to execute dozens of criminals, which helped him to pay his bills being paid to perform the bloody office. If the Nazis had not abolished execution by axe, then it bears the question as to how many heads would Groppler have taken as they continued to impose their police state onto Germany. It's almost certain that if it continued in this way during the Second World War, Groppler would have become one of the most serial headsmen in history. Once again, thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. And once again, thank you so much for watching.